If you've never heard of the El Rocio Czar, that makes two of us. Personally, this brand and machine is one I'd only started hearing about a couple months ago. And this particular machine, the V2, is a joint effort between El Rocio, a Korean manufacturer, and Prima Coffee Equipment, an American distributor. The result is a new addition to the prosumer espresso market that includes fully manual pressure control, programmable shot values, dual boilers with PID, among many others at a reasonable price considering the options of $37.50. Like most things on paper, this sounds pretty good. But is it too good to be true, or is this thing going to be setting new standards in its price range? So these are the questions I'm looking to answer today, but first, just a little disclosure. Prima Coffee Equipment sent me this machine for my review and feedback. This is not a paid advertisement, and as always, I decline doing any promo codes or affiliate link, as they tend to present bias. This review, like all of my reviews, isn't intended to benefit me beyond being able to make content out of it and share an informational video with you. So if you like what I do and you want to support, just watching is enough, but if you want to go above and beyond, a like, a share, and a subscribe, or even joining the Patreon is much appreciated. But with all that out of the way, let's dive in. Just taking a quick glance around the Zar V2, it's easy to miss its most interesting feature, the controller. And we're going to start with that because it controls almost everything on the machine. Once powered up, it loads up the touchscreen display and home page. On the home page, you have the time, the current boiler temperature, what shot setting you're on, the shot counter, and if it's ready to brew. From the home page, you can quickly change the brew boiler temperature and shot style. Under the settings tab, you can change the two auto shot presets, which allow you to edit the pre-infusion time, the pre-infusion stop time, the pre-infusion power, i.e. the pressure, and of course the shot time. While under that setting, you can also adjust a lot of the temp settings, most importantly, the shot and the steam temperature. And lastly, some other random stuff that I didn't use, like on-off timers and sleep modes. And much like this YouTube channel, the main attraction is the knob. This is where you can directly control the pressure at the group, allowing you to go from off to a 15 bar max extraction. This allows you the ability to run whatever pressure profile your little barista heart desires. The group itself is a 58mm E61 style, with an integrated heater aimed at enhancing temperature stability. Inside the machine you've got two vibration pumps I mentioned earlier, and two boilers, a 0.6 liter brew boiler and a 1.8 liter steam. Even though the steam boiler is basically half the size of the Mini's 3.5 liter, it rivals the steaming stability and both will run up to 30 seconds at a consistent 1.5 bar pressure and recover quickly. Of course, all machines have their quirks and downsides, and the Czar isn't immune. So after a couple weeks on the bar, I noticed a few things that I think are worth mentioning. The manual pressure flow is difficult to run accurately and consistently. And I gotta say, using a knob just isn't as tactile or rewarding as using a paddle or something similar. The pressure itself is controlled through vibration pumps, which aren't very consistent in how they build and maintain pressure. Instead, they build and release over and over again, hence the up and down motion you'll notice on the gauge. Which is in direct contrast to just how stable the pressure is on a rotary pump like the one inside the Mini. As a fan of all things data, I do like the idea of having a shot counter. But it seems the Czar only counts pump activation and not the actual back pressure of a real shot. So more or less with group flushing, you're looking at only 1 in 3 on the count being an actual espresso pull. When using the steam knob, I noticed there's a lot of play between full off and the release of pressure. And regardless if you've even used the wand, it seems to have a consistent drip which would be not even worth mentioning if you could actually place it over the drip tray without awkwardly angling it all up in the way of the group. Beyond the controller, using the Zar V2 isn't all that different from other espresso machines, but there are a couple subtle differences. For one, depending on the shot you're running, there are two separate on switches. Manual shots require the use of the dial to turn the pump on and begin the shot. Automatic shots require you to press the green flow button on the right hand side of the machine, just above the drip tray. Of course, if you're running a manual shot, which I found myself doing far more than automatic, you'll need to be engaged with that process throughout the shot, which kind of defeats the purpose of being able to steam and pull espresso at the same time. 
I did find the user interface on the controller to be much cleaner and easier to navigate than I expected. Each option and page seemed pretty straightforward. But all in all, there isn't much to say about the workflow on the Czar. Most moderately experienced baristas will find themselves right at home after a matter of minutes. So while I was producing this video, I also posted a picture of the Czar on my Instagram story and asked people what questions they had about the machine, and there was a surprising amount of responses. So I picked a few out to answer here. And the first question I chose was how long from cold to first shot? So I tested this out after being off overnight. And from the moment you switch it on, it gets up to brewing temp in four minutes and steaming in nine. And the second question is, is it weird having a control panel outside the machine? Now it may seem like an odd idea, but it's actually not that different. The Senesso machines for commercial use have been using an outside control panel for quite a while, and most of the cafes I worked in early on in my career had Senessos, and so it's something I'm pretty used to. But for most people, this will feel a little weird at first, but it's actually kind of nice compared to most commercial machines that have screens that feel like they're from a cheap digital watch. So the next question is, how does it handle back-to-back -back shots? So to test this out, I prepped up four shots and pulled them back-to-back -back on the auto function. The PID readout started at a set 205 and dropped four degrees by the end, but the cup temp stayed extremely consistent, peaking at 151 degrees Fahrenheit on the first and last pull. One of my favorite questions that I saw, and I'm doing this for selfish purposes, but it says, for fun, can you do some ridiculous profiles like one minute long pre-infusions? Indeed I can. My personal favorite is emulating a classic lever machine. Starting with a very low pressure pre-infusion, I did about 15 seconds with the line pressure, then ramped up quickly to nine bars, and then a slow decline in pressure for the remainder of the shot. The entire shot totals around 45 to 50 seconds, including the pre-infusion, and results in a very textural shot with low acidity and bitterness. Another shot I really enjoyed was about one minute long, pulling on about two bars for the majority, about 30 to 40 seconds, and ramping up to four to six bars for the final 20 to 30. The result was a one to 3.5 ratio shot that was juicy, surprisingly clean without a hint of over extraction. Overall, those shots really reminded me of the Elange shots I had when I used the Decent. And last but not least, I would love to hear what you think of the design. And I'm going to assume when you say design, you're meaning the way it looks, and it's definitely distinctive. Honestly, I'm not a fan of the look, and it just sort of feels like it's riding an odd middle ground between vintage and modern, and I would rather it just embrace one or the other. Over the last few weeks of having the Czar V2 on my bar, I've come to appreciate a lot about the machine. It's extremely capable in terms of producing tasty shots of espresso, and the functionality of the manual pre-infusion allows you to go down the extraction rabbit hole when you feel like it, or use a more simplified automatic function when you just want a more hands-off pull. The steam is strong and consistent throughout the process, as well as developing any type of foam you want, from wet glossy paint for even the most delicate latte art, to a nice dense foam for a traditional cappuccino. In general, all of the parts and pieces I've had my hands on look and feel of pretty high quality, which leaves me just wondering one thing. Why the use of the cheaper, less consistent vibration pumps? I found no specific explanation on that choice, but I'd speculate it's maybe a space-saving thing considering the layout of the interior is a little tight, with the water tank in the back as opposed to underneath like the Mini. But for a machine in this price range, a rotary pump just seems like a better option. Regardless of that and some of the other quirks and downsides I covered earlier, the El Rocio Zara V2 feels like a welcome addition to the prosumer market. With one caveat, its reliability and longevity is untested, and having it for a few weeks just isn't enough time and isn't enough data, so we'll just have to wait and see. And with that, I'm gonna wrap this one up. Thanks again to the folks at Prima Coffee Distributors for sending me this machine for review. If you have any questions about the Czar or espresso machines in general, drop them in the comment section down below. Oh, and if you have any questions about the title or the thumbnail of this video, just consider what day today is. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. And a big thank you to my April Patreons, Stephen, Claire, Sam, Bound Coffee, Spookus, Noel, Cheryl, Tom, Sean, Horison, Rose, Squeegee, Ads, Josh, Corey, Tim, Tony, 
Matt, Jason, Cameron, Jeffrey, Jeff Roth, Mike B, Byron, Tyler, Jose, BJK Cafe, JRC Absolute, Stephen G, Home Barista Coach, Keefe, John K, Hexagram, Gumby, Alex Link, Barista Michael, Arthur L, Techcom Advisors, Ed T, Happy Camper, Keith M, Gary M, Devo H, Ben K, Rami C, Monster 04, Bruce P, Lilac Y, Brooks Henry, Sam O, Damian, Suen, Marco K, Pat T, and Nano Roastery. And of course, a big thank you to the Barista and Barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and the upper right hand corner right now. And of course, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week, my blog at Spromethius.com, my coffee at littlegiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.